Suspended acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ibrahim Magu, will today open his defense before the panel investigating him on 22 allegations contained in a memo sent to the president by the Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Justice, Aubakar Malami. After his release from police custody on Wednesday, he returned to his official residence in Metama, Abuja. A source told TVC News that he is in high spirits and in company of all well-wishers who prayed with him as he arrived at his home. A detachment of mobile police officers have been stationed around the premises to provide security. He had been held after uh, he honored an invitation by the Presidential Advisory Council against corruption. His release from detention followed a request from his lawyer, Wahab Shitu, to the Inspector General of Police to release Minister, or Mr. Magu and the subsequent clarification directing his lawyer to address the request to the panel of inquiry. So let's get more perspective on this uh, developing story. I have joining me a professor of international law at Dimola Abbas. Thank you for joining in. My pleasure. Now, um, he has been in detention for 10 days. What does this mean legally? Oh, uh, thank you very much for having me. It's quite uh, worrisome mm -hmm. uh, that you detained him for 10 days without uh, making public uh, the constitutional basis for his detention. Uh, don't let's uh, forget that Magu is being investigated. He's not standing a trial. Mm -hmm. uh, even if he's standing a trial, I mean, there will have been, uh, the police will arrest him, you know, for 24 or 48 hours. If you need to extend that, that is beyond 48 hours, you need to go to the court and get an order extending the duration of his detention for X. But until this moment, neither the panel nor anybody has told us who authorized the detention of Magu, mm -hmm. on what basis uh, was that detention or that who takes responsibility for yeah. it. Yes. And I, I don't think it's entirely appropriate that uh, you just uh, took him and detained him for 10 days and that is it, and they say, let's release him. Th th there's a whole lot um, held in secrecy, so to speak, a whole lot that we don't know. Uh, we're hoping will unfold as the days go by. Um, just like you said, nobody has taken responsibility, which was going to be my next question on uh, how does this play? Nobody's taking responsibility for it. Um, um, what, what are the charges? If he knows the charges, has he, has he seen the charges? Is he okay with the charges? What are his takes on the charges? Well, thank you very much. That's a very important question because, as you said earlier on, his lawyer, Wahab Shitu, came out and said uh, Mr. Magu was not given a, a list of his charges. Mm -hmm. So he was taken to a panel to go and defend things that he didn't know he was being accused of until he got to the panel. And look, let's be honest here, there's something wrong with that. You should give him the opportunity to be able to defend himself, to be able to speak authoritatively to what you are uh, alleging him of. For if he doesn't know that, it, it then he raises questions about constitutionality and uh, about procedural regularity, uh, about how we do things of this nature in this, in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to be above board, uh, no matter what. Uh, he's a Nigerian citizen, and before the Nigerian constitution, Mr. Magu should be presumed innocent until otherwise proven. Yes. We're not even talking about trial here. It's mm. a mere investigation, mm. so to say. Why does it, okay, finally, um, we'll press for time. If you look at the history, it seems as if history is repeating itself. I say this because it, we have, um, it, there hasn't been any EFCC chairman or boss who has ceremoniously left office. It's been one allegation after another, and this is playing out again. Why is, why, why is this so? Well, that is, that is a very interesting question. Um, I think straight away, whether you are Waziri or you are Ribadu or you are Lamode and Wagu, and Magu, all of them happen to be serving police officers. Mm. And that is because there is a provision that you can only appoint them uh, from police uh, rank. Why should you limit the appointment of the EFCC chairperson to the police? Look, for instance, you have to ask yourself a question. How do Nigerians themselves at large see the police force? I'm not saying the police is corrupt as a whole, no. But I'm saying the police force as an institution does not inspire a lot of confidence in the country, mm -hmm. in, in majority of Nigerians. So limiting the appointment of EFCC chairperson to the police already raises a question of confidence in the mind of the public. That's number one. Number two, whenever you appoint the chairman of EFCC as an example, is there follow-on risk assessment when they, are on, on, when they are on that seat? Because when you appoint somebody to a public office, when they haven't 
how others that kind of the amount of figure of money yes, we are talking yes. about here. Mm. And then maybe we begin to expect them to be angels mm. when they start seeing billions exposed and billions of to when they are exposed they to the haven't. amount of money that you are exposed to, there must be a continuous risk assessment about how fit they are and how probe they are. We don't do that. We need to strengthen that as we go on. Thank you so much. We can't go on. We'll have to stop right now. Um, Abbas, Abbas Atimola, Professor of International Law. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure.